Hi, good afternoon uh, once more. This is our uh, series 2 of the subject matter on succession, legal succession. It's about 20 minutes past 2 o'clock uh, on a very uh, relaxing Sunday, 20 minutes past 2 o'clock in the afternoon, October 17, 2021. We have already uploaded the first uh, portion which has been labeled uh, Legal Succession Family Tree and we com completed the discussion of the Family Tree. We shall now proceed with the uh, concept of relationship and uh, right of uh, representation before we finally go over the details of the uh, various uh, what we call this heirs to a decedent who passed away without preparing a last will and testament. I reiterate, I offer this particular uh, upload in honor of my own mother, Dr. Natividad Bernardo Balagtas Bisquera a long time uh, high school teacher of the University of the East and uh, having been born in Santa Rosa, Nueva Ecija but whose roots come from uh, Candaba, Pampanga through my maternal grandfather attorney Sabiniano Hernandez Balagtas whose roots in turn are really from Bigaa or Balagtas, Bulacan. Without much ado now, allow me to click uh, this uh, and I don't have to repeat uh, the little credentials that I would like to mention except I'd like to reiterate my appreciation for the University of the East for allowing me to be one of the uh, outstanding alumni in the 75th celebration of the anniversary of UE. And uh, hold on for a while. Uh, surprisingly, my dear friend, uh, uh, basketball superstar and Senator Robert Jaworski, finally got his recognition from our alma mater. Senator Bobby, congratulations, and I'm very happy that while belated, the two of us have received our recognition awards. Without uh, much ado, let me just uh, set up uh, uh, the background that has been playing. This is a very sentimental song uh, whose title is Ballad for Adeline. And it was a very sentimental so, uh, song for me because I remember a lady that I appreciated and looked up to when we were at the UST Education High School. I'm referring to Miss Helen Bella, who uh, had a very popular program at about this time, Sunday afternoon. And when she comes in, her introductory music was this. But for years, I never knew what this music was all about. I had to look for it here at the internet. And I finally found it out. So I'm sharing it with you as an introduction. Moving now to the uh, supposed to be table of contents of our discussion on uh, succession. We already uh, finished the concepts in taxation. In taxation. In, I'm sorry, very sorry. Got tuned up with taxation. In succession, rather. And we are about ready now, including the discussion on the family tree in an earlier uh, slide, which you may want to visit because of the impact of the family tree, not only on the discussion of succession, but also in the area of the family code. So I am about to go back to the general provisions, although this first part was all, the first part, which is relationship, has already been taken up in the earlier upload. Then it will proceed with the uh, right of representation where the children can take over to represent their parent who may be the heir to a decedent. 
and then after that we go to the full details of the heirs that are uh, that have the rights under uh, the civil uh, law uh, like the children under the direct descending direct line or the parents under the ascending direct line the illegitimate children the surviving spouse the collateral relatives of brothers sisters nephews and nieces and in the absence of the one two three four five heirs recognized by the civil code then the state takes over in the absence of any other heir so uh, moving now to the general provisions uh, i have uh, somehow already taken up the subject matter of relationship in uh, as it uh, becomes relevant to uh, the issue of succession however I do not mind uh, repeating this uh, for those of you who may want to again be reminded of it before we go full blast on the segments of the heirs that are recognized under legal succession. Relationship. Under the concept of relationship, what is important is, hold on for a while. Sorry, the interruption was mainly because I wanted to make sure that you're getting the sound because uh, the other night when I recorded for three hours the first version of this one and I was about to upload it in YouTube, I realized that uh, first the microphone was picking up uh, the low volume and so there was no intelligently... Uh, uh, reasonable sound that is coming out and so I had to repeat that whole thing all over again so I didn't want to to uh, make that same mistake sorry for this little interruption that must be in the recording now if I will have the time I will edit that portion and remove it otherwise uh, it's really too small a few seconds in your interruption and probably uh, you really don't mind it Going back to what I already started under Article uh, 963 of in relationship under succession of the civil code, it says, Relationship is the proximity of relationship being determined by the number of generations. Each generation forms a degree. For those of you who have gone through already the family tree, you can imagine from your present situation, if you are the uh, progenitor, and you move to your father, that is one generation and that the reason why your generation gap between your father and you is called a degree. So your father and you belong to uh, or separate is separated by one generation and your generation is also equivalent to one degree in relationship. In the case of the grandfather, it will be two generations, no? your father's generation, his generation and that's two generations. And that would also bring you to two, de two civil degrees relationship with your grandfather. Continuing now, a series of degrees forms a line which may be either direct or collateral. And so when you have generations, first, second, third, fourth, and you start now looking at it from a perspective, you see a line. And that series of degrees decrease. Uh, forms uh, a line and that is essentially the direct line uh, of your uh, family structure. This is how it looks. No? Okay, let me just uh, make the proper positioning of this one. So there you are. It says the degrees of uh, the series of degrees forms a line. You see from the first, uh, first, second, third and fourth it forms a line and the line may either be direct, this one is direct, vertical, or you will, uh, you already saw in that uh, 
uh, table tree uh, or family tree, there is this uh, development of the side of collateral line. So a direct line is by constituted, a direct line is that constituted by a series of decrees, no? this one, or generations. No? First generation, first degree, second generation, second degree, third generation, third degree, fourth generation, fourth degree. Uh, and so that therefore, a direct line is a series of decrees among ascendants. No? This is his great grand, uh, great great grandfather is an ascendant. And if this is you, then you are a descendant. In the case of a collateral line, uh, that is constituted by the series of decrees. No? Again, by gen generation that uh, are also equivalent to decrees. Among persons who are not ascendants or descendants. In effect, there can be relatives who are not falling in the same uh, straight line. You know, they are not in the direct line. They are in effect in another line, but they get connected because a, of a common ancestor. And we have already seen that, that your father uh, is the connector, the common, uh, uh, what do you call this, the, the common, uh, uh, what call this, ascendant, to establish the relationship between your father and the other son who happens to be your brother. And so the, the relationship of your father and your brother starts, starts a collateral line where you are coming from a common ancestor, the grandfather or father. Okay, so th that is what we call the collateral line. There you are uh, starting to number the generations and therefore the decrease of relationship. Now, the direct line is either descending pababa or ascending pataas. If uh, the direct line is descending, as I believe the former unites the head of the family. So if this is the head of the family and you trace the direct line descending, it establishes that the head of the family and how uh, he developed his empire, if you may put it, no? uh, and, and therefore who followed him in the totem pole, in the hierarchy. So great-grandfather, for example, is Ambo. Uh, the great-grandfather was uh, Tasio. And the next one is Pedro. And this one is Santi. And this is you, that is, uh, for example, uh, JSB. Now, if the direct line is ascending, hindi pa baba, kundi pa taas, the ascending uh, direct line binds a person, like you are at the bottom of the, uh, of the pyramid. No? And therefore, uh, it tells you where are you coming from no? with those from whom he descends. No? Saan, na, saan ka nanggaling? I my father, my father came from my grandfather, my great grand uh, my grandfather is coming from my great grandfather and great great grandfather is the source of this limited uh, show of our direct family line. Uh, let me bring this up let me bring this down a little now here. para Magkasya naman. Okay. And we click to remove the dirt. Yung mga magugulong mga titles. Okay. There is a little trick here of clicking the, arrow, the, the, uh, the mouse on the left side and it removes all of those uh, labels. Now, on the right side it says, in the line, meaning this one, as many decrees are counted as there are generations of persons excluding the progenitor. You are the progenitor. And so there will be degrees, no? like degree number, civil degree 1, 2, 3, 4, as there are generations. No? So your first generation of your father, second generation of your grandfather, third generation, and then fourth generation. In the direct line, ascent is made to the common ancestor. No? In the direct line, papanek. You go to a common ancestor. That the child is one degree removed. No? This child is one degree removed from the parent. If you want to set up nila. One degree. Two from the uh, grandfather. Ito, no? 
these are the generations that are representing the decrease and therefore uh, they are the intervening uh, degrees no? to form part of the relationship. In the collateral line, ascent is made. So if you are trying to trace a relative not on the vertical line, direct line, but on the uh, right side because uh, he was introduced as a separate direct line. Those two direct lines will have to have a common ancestor. So, pwede mangyari, you have a grandfather who is your common ancestor. And therefore, while your father is connected to him, this father has also, his, this father has also a son. So, merong, merong another uh, a direct line dito, uh, which starts with the son. Pwede rin idugtong yun sa father. No? And so that therefore, the father... And uh, his other son, who is your brother, becomes the, the brother of your father. Okay. In the collateral line, you first go up, sabi yan, ascent, no? papanik, to the common ancestor, dito, grandfather, and then descent, pababa. It's made to the person with whom the computation is to be made. No? So if you're going down, you're trying to establish the relationship of the other son of the grandfather, who happens to be the uh, brother of your father. That is how the thing is, is being traced. Thus, a person is two degrees removed from his brother. No? Tulad niyan, one, two. Okay? Three from his uncle. No? Yung, nandito yung uncle. No? A grandfather. Meron dito uncle. So, it is one, two, three, and four. Okay? Uh, dito sabi, three from his uncle. No? So, this is one, two, three. Uh, one, two. And then, lilipat do sa uncle is three who is the brother of his father for, from the first cousin and so on. Full blood relationship is that existing between persons who have the same father and the same mother. So, same father, same mother, and there are two of you, so your brothers. Then you have a full blood relationship. But the half blood relationship happens when two persons who have the same father, parehong tatay, but not the same mother, hiwala yung nanay. Either namatay nung una, yung asawa, nag-asawa uli yung father. So they, there can be two sets of children there, you know. And so these two children are considered half-blood brothers and half-blood sisters. Okay. Let's put this a little para makita nyo. It says, if there are several relatives of the same degree, no? ibig sabihin, the same generation, and one or some of them are unwilling or incapacitated to succeed. Hindi sila makatake over do sa nasa ibabaw sa kanila. His portion shall accrue to the others of the same degree. Magahanap pa for the same generation. Save the right of representation, which will take up in a little while. No, ibig sabihin, kung meron na sumusunod na descendant na pwede magtake over to represent that particular person who is incapacitated to succeed. And uh, moving now to further to the, uh, the last uh, slide uh, space. If the inheritance should be repudiated by the nearest relative, should there be only one or by all the nearest relatives called by law to succeed? Should there be several, those of the following degree shall inherit in their own right and cannot represent the person or persons repudiating the Kikita natin yan as we go along. This is where we now start the ball rolling for the fresh set under the second uh, presentation. Because the topic of relationship has been covered in, an er in the earlier uh, upload. Now this is the start of the second upload. Rep the right of representation. Representation is a right created by fiction of law, by virtue of which the representative is raised to the place and degree of the person represented and acquires the rights which the latter would have if he were living or if he could have inherited. To simplify, let's give an example that you are the person in that diagram and you have a father and, you, and he has a father who is your grandfather. Let me somehow your uh, your grandfather died. Uh, I'm sorry. Your your father died, 
ahead of your grandfather. The death of your grand of your father does not deprive him to receive the right from a legal standpoint, except that he cannot physically receive it because he's already gone. And this is where representation comes in. By the authority of law, the civil code provides that if your father, who deserves to get a, a, a uh, what they call this, a, an inheritance, from your lolo, from your grandfather, but he's not there, then you can sub, uh, uh, you, you can take over, no? in effect, you know, by virtue of which it's raised to the place. So you are the father, you, you're the son. You now go into being placed in that slot where your father is staying. And therefore, with that kind of right, then you acquire whatever right that belongs to him. Now, if you, there are, if there is only one uh, legitimate child like you to take over the place of the uh, father who passed away, then so be it. Then you get all the uh, uh, properties under the estate. But if it so happens that you have a brother, and therefore your promotion into being a representative of your father in the uh, inheritance or in the, success, in the succession will not be only your own. It will be your brother and yourself who goes there. And whatever is uh, received uh, from the estate will be received by you and divided by you equally. Okay. Now, the representative is called to the succession by the law. It is not the person who is... Uh, who who has died, who is taking, who is asking you to represent him. No, it is the law itself. It is the civil code on succession that says you are the representative. So the representative does not succeed the person represented. Hindi mo talaga take over, you know, yung position noong, noong father mo. Oh. But the one whom the person represented would have succeeded. Kung bagay sa yung tatay mo, Siya yung pwedeng pumalit sa lolo mo. Nauna lang siyang mamatay. No? So, if you are the representative of your father being the only uh, child, then the representative does not succeed the person. Hindi ka nagiging tagapagmana nito. Kung, uh, hindi, yung pagsasubstitute mo, it says, but the one whom the person represented would have succeeded. Ayan. Oh. Written natin. The representative does not succeed the person represented. So if you are the son, namatay ang tatay mo, you come in by representation. Says, but the one whom the person represented would have succeeded. Okay, so yun. Take over mo yung position noong iyong tatay na nauna nang matay sa lolo mo. Now, the right of representation takes place in the direct descending line. But never in the ascending line. Ito ang nagdo-drawing na, no? So, pag sinabi na magre-represent ka, dapat doon sa direct descending line ang representation. So, for example, the father here is uh, in the direct uh, descending line. Pababang ganon. You know? uh, when he goes into the principle of representation dito, eh siya yung hindi pwede, matepok siya o yung nagapin, then it is the direct descending line that decides who takes over by representation. Eh pag pababang ganon, no, tumabi siya, ikaw ang susunod. So, ikaw yung papanig doon. Yun ang sinasabi dito. Now, uh, parate, ang pinag-uusapan dito is direct design thing din, din, parating pababa ang paghahanap ng papalit, hindi pataas. Okay. Now, in the collateral line, just like uh, here, the brother uh, has a collateral line with uh, the grandfather and the father. In the collateral line, it takes only, it takes place only in favor of the children of brothers and sisters. So, kung may brother ka rito, no, at siya eh, meron pang anak, uh, yun lang ang limitasyon ng pag-take over under representation. Yung mga anak noong tumangging tanggapin o hindi matanggap yung pamana. Continuing. In order that representation may take place, it is necessary that the representative himself is capable of succeeding the decedent. Okay. Whenever there is possession, succession rather, by representation, meron lang 
nag-take over do sa posisyon na hindi pwedeng ma-take over, namatay. The division of the estate shall be made by stirpes. Ang ibig sabihin, no, kung, kung minana niya, for example, yung slot ng kanyang tatay do sa pagmamana. No? Pero yung mga kapatid, buhay lahat, so siya lang ang mangyayari na uh, bibigan by representation. And therefore, when you divide this according to the number of the legitimate children or illegitimate children who can take over, then tinitingnan yung numero. Tinitingnan yung numero. Okay. Basta buong buo sila pag sampa doon, pag nakuha nila yung pera, sila nagahati-hati na kung ano yung mapupunta yung pera. And the principle is equality. Here it says, when children of one or more brothers or sisters of the deceased survive, they shall inherit from the latter by representation. So one or more, uh, uh, one or more children of any one of the more brothers of the deceased person, no? then uh, they can, uh, they shall inherit from the latter by representation if they've survived with their uncles and aunts. If they are if they but if they alone survive they shall inherit in equal proportion so kung wala yung mga auntie nila yung mga uh, uncle nila di diretso na sa kanila yun no? pero again per, uh, allocated pa rin sa kanila kung dalawa o tatlo sila paghahatian nila ng dalawa o tatlo okay a person may represent him whose inheritance he has renounced so Ayaw ng tatay mong tanggapin. Nirinaw siya. Ayaw ko. Ayaw tanggapin. E bigla siyang nawala. Pwede kang mag-take over. Para, sa, para sabihin mo, hindi naman o binding sa akin yung sinabi ng tatay ko eh. And so you say, a person may represent him whose inheritance he has renowned. So, pwede mong i-take over you know, yung slot ng tatay mo in that kind of uh, succession. Uh, uh, because in reality, you no. Know, his re- rejection of the acceptance did not prejudice your situation as his child. Okay? Then finally, excuse me, on this subject matter, heirs who repudiate their share may not be represented. Ito, ito dito, ayaw lang tanggapin. Eh, no? Kasi inheritance has renounced. A person may represent him as inheritance has been renounced. Dito, yung heirs, Ayaw nang tagapin yung share nila. In that particular regard, pati yung mga anak nila will not have the capability to inherit uh, whatever was declared uh, delinquent by the father under Article 977. Okay. Let's move on. At this point, mga we are uh, about ready to take off to launch now our uh, our discussion on this one. But let me just double check on the general provisions here. Napag-usapan na natin ito eh, no? Okay. So if we push this, go to this, then investigate general provisions. Uh, wala na yata ang kasunod dito. No? Uh, napag-usapan na natin lahat ito. Relationships, right of representation. So, sabi natin, o oh, sige, wala na pala tayong pag-uusapan dito. Let's go back to our main topic. At dito, sabi natin, ang unang-una nating uh, kakausapin in order for us to understand uh, what the situation is, is the descending direct line. So this diagram natin, ikaw yun, in relation to your father where we have executed a uh, red, reddish uh, labeling, okay? So let's take a look at this one. Okay. So, nagkaroon ngayon ng isang kasama tayo na COVID na matay. And therefore, uh, 
his remains would now be purely his estate. Kasama nung uh, uh, property ng kanyang asawa. So imagine if this particular couple uh, were living husband and wife by benefit of the marriage, either number one, by the uh, ben- benefit of uh, the marriage contract before the family code. And then the marriage contract after the family code. And then ultimately, yung Sharia court uh, proceeding. Okay. So, dito, assume lang natin na yung mag-asawa, they were able to accumulate their uh, properties like a beautiful uh, household in uh, somewhere in the Ayala Alamon area. The, uh, what they call this, the couple have also assembled, uh, uh, bought Uh, ilang, ilang vehicles to. Six vehicles, mostly smart, smartly. And so, and then they have cash deposited in city bank. Just with the combination of this, you can already see there is such a thing as a uh, property that are jointly owned by the, uh, by, by the owners. And one of them is the city So, the most important thing which uh, which allowed me to remain is my mother is that if there is an absolute community property arising from the family code or there is conjugal partnership of gains arising from uh, what the uh, civil code then what can happen here is that when you add up these two to form the conjugate proper, uh, conjugal property or your uh, absolute community property. This is a very fundamental principle. 50% of the joint property will immediately be belong to the surviving spouse. Sa magkatwid, the remaining 50% now belongs to the other, uh, to the deceased uh, party. And therefore, hati na kagad sila. 100 million, ito na ngayon. No? 50-50 na lang, no? ang mapupunta doon sa asawa. Let me just uh, go back there. Yun, 50-50. And so the surviving spouse out of the 100 million conjugal property or up to the community, she gets 50 million. And the decedent uh, uh, who happens to be either the husband or the wife will essentially now get the other 50%. Now, just to complete the picture, if and when uh, the uh, decedent happens to be receiving some property, I, we call it ancestral property, minana, from the parents or whichever source, and it is uh, amounting to 10 million, the estate of the uh, deceased person now will consist of the 50 million coming from the uh, dito solid uh, community so absolute uh, community or conjugal property tapos sasamahan mo ng 10 million sa sarili niyang property you have 60 million here or not so remember the 60 million 50 million from conjugal 10 million from uh, what do you call this uh, absolute, uh, absolute uh, from, from the combination of the uh, Absolute community. Absolute community. Continuing now. We will now uh, start understanding how does the inheritance go down in the vertical uh, discounted line. Okay. Uh, so, tingnan natin, ano yung magiging effect sa descending direct line. And here, Under Articles uh, 978 and 979, it says, Succession pertains to the descending direct line. So, kung natitignan mo, naka-direct line mo na ba? Do sa, nandun ba sa property na kasama ng direct line? Ang second, no, if ownership has already been uh, resolved. Therefore, at titignan mo ngayon, meron bang anak? Usually, pababa ang tracing kung saan mo pupunta. And so, here it says, legitimate children and their dependents succeed the parents and 
other associates without distinction as to sex or age and even if they should not come from different marriages. Okay. Now, following that, so yung palang mga direct descendant, no? yung, yun, malinaw, legitimate children sa kanila mga pupunta yung mga properties under the estate of the children. Now, an innocent child, if present, also succeeds to the property of the adopting parent in the same manner as legitimate child. Malakas ka dyan, no? What you can do now is combine the, uh, whatever this, uh, you, you can now uh, take a look at the uh, properties and then combine now, yung sinasabi combine, the legitimate child or children with the adopted child as if the adopted child is being counted as a legitimate child. Okay. So, under that particular thing, the children of the deceased always inherit from him in their own right, dividing the inheritance in equal shares. Ang ibig lang sabihin niyan, mga kaibigan, kung meron kang direct line, who knows, 3, 4, 5 years ago, tinignan mo, in-update ng valuation. Pareho pa rin ang property relationship niyo eh, hindi nagpapago. Okay? Now, ah, uh, On the other ha, uh, so hindi nagbabago na ikaw pa rin yung tagapagmana ng property mo under the direct line when you are the brother or sister of the deceased person. So uh, it says here, children of the deceased shall always inherit from him in their own right, dividing the, uh, the inheritance of uh, uh, the uh, inheritance of the nawawala na ako ha. Uh, and by the latter by right of representation. The grandchildren and other descendants shall inherit by right of representation and if any one of them should have died, leaving several heirs, the proportion pertaining to him should be divided among the latter in equal proportions. Here is now an example of the uh, descendants, the legitimate children, and the adopted children getting their share in the uh, estate of their father. So the first source says the legitimate children and their descendants succeed in the parents and other dependents, uh, etc. Then the entire 60 million we saw a while ago would now go to the legitimate children or sasama pa yung uh, auto-adopted children. So, tatlong kategorya yan. Yung, yung straightforward legitimate children. Second, yung legitimated children, past tense na, uh, which which came in. May mga anak yun, entitled din yun. And then, yung nga, yung adopted uh, children. Pagmama na din yung adopted children. So, tatlo ang kategorya ng children who are entitled to, to merit the uh, property taken over by share it in this particular case. Let's have a break muna at this point and we will come back to, to this one. It would be good for us 